content doesn't seem as fun to create, right? This is a problem that me as a creator, as an entrepreneur, have faced many, many times. And it's a problem of burnout. And I'm gonna bring you three ways that maybe you can try if you're facing this problem right now. Start a passion project. I know there's a lot of advice out there that says focus on the one thing, but if we've been focusing on the one thing for like three, four years, maybe we need a little bit of a spark, right? Consume content or consume from other industries apart from yours. What are those elements that you can bring into it? And have fun. What's exciting? What's new? There to change it a little bit. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Content is Profit. Today, I bring you something special. I was just on a call with incredible creators from HubSpot. And this is a problem that me as a creator, as an entrepreneur, have faced many, many times. And it's a problem of burnout, right? And uh, we get these questions often in our in our community with the clients that come to the studio. It's like, okay, Luis, I've been creating for a long time. It's the same format. It's the same thing. And, um, you know, maybe I don't feel up to par to continue to create this piece of content or this platform or my show, right? And uh, there's many ways where we can take this conversation, but it came from, the question in this specific case came from a creator that we really admire in the in the network that we've met, that he speaks on stages. He's a, he has a very big show and uh, he was very honest, right? He was saying that lately he's been feeling like not, not excited to create that he's been feeling a little bit frustrated, that he feels that he needs to meet expectations for his sponsors. And uh, and all these doubts started, you know, to, to come to his mind. He also shared that it was harder to create, that he was dreading the, the moment where we were creating, where before it was really easy to, you know, turn on the camera and talk about this topic that he was really excited about. So I started to think and... Uh, to me, I've been in situations like that. And recently with uh, Continuous Profit, to be completely honest, I think we felt a little bit like that, right? There, there's just, uh, you know, I'm going to open up here. There's been a lot of stuff happening in our private lives, you know, from we, we recently turned a year about purchasing this studio, a new business. So there's a lot of, of operations that have been happening on that end. Uh, you know, family, uh, events, uh, we've been traveling, smaller kids, you know, business issues with the agency, team growing, like all these things that have been happening and all of a sudden, content doesn't seem as fun to create, right? And I think uh, everybody might go through uh, a phase like that. And if you haven't, you probably will face it at some point where it's really easy to stop, right? Uh, because you're like, oh, maybe I'll just record tomorrow or maybe, you know, maybe this is not as important. And in our case, we've done our best to stay consistent at least twice a week. You know, we used to do three times a week. Right now we do twice a week. It's because I f feel we have a duty with the people that listen to this show. So uh, that's part of what we're doing. And, uh, you know, some of it has reactivated, it reactivated the fire to continue to create and have these conversations. And at the end of the day, those conversations uh, feed our soul, right? We feel very happy. And every time we have the conversation uh, internally for us, it works because it helps us move forward. So that's how, uh, in our case, we do it. Now, it was really interesting because the question is like, how do we actually fight burnout? And we had a discussion with another few creators from the hospital podcast network. And it was like really exciting to talk about this stuff because everybody kind of gave their perspective. And I'm going to bring you three things that we kind of talked about. Um, three ways that maybe you can try if you're facing this problem right now, right? So I'm going to start with the story. So recently, right, we've been talking about launching a soccer podcast. We're very, you know, as you know, or if you have seen our clips, sometimes we come out with soccer jerseys. In fact, I'm wearing one <laughs> right under my Beast Bro sweater right now. And um, it's just like, literally, we're literally so passionate. That's the sport that brought us here to the States. We watch it every single weekend. Right now, the time of this recording, the Cup America and the Euro Cup is happening. And we really enjoy it. We consume a ton of content. We read a ton of news. We, you know, we play the sport still. I have my five-year playing. So it's a topic that really uh, I feel very excited about. So the fact that we started thinking about starting a soccer podcast or a, a football show got my wheels turning and kind of 
changing my perspective around also content's profit and the other shows that we that we manage, right? Because we're now thinking about creative ways on how can we create that show? How can we develop it? How can we make it effective for recording based on the time and the capacity and the and the resources that we have? So with that said, that's my number one tip. It's basically start a passion project. Guess what? That passion project might not have to be in business, and I know there's a lot of advice out there that says focus on the one thing, but if we've been focusing on the one thing for like three, four years, maybe we need a little bit of a spark, right? And uh, personally, here's what I did. Uh, obviously, we don't record in my home studio anymore, so that became my home office, and there's some equipment there. I literally went on an Amazon <laughs> shopping spree and I bought a bunch of soccer decorations. I have uh, some signed jerseys there. I have already a bunch of stuff. But the idea of creating this like soccer set got me really excited. So currently I'm working on that set to make it sure that it's something that I really like. Put on film, for example. You will see it very, very soon. If you're interested, let me know. And all of a sudden, that sparked some, in- some, some conversations on how can we make this set right here in the studio a lot better. Then we said, okay, how are we going to run this show? What are the concepts? What are the topics? What are the, instead of just conversations, right? What else are we doing? And there's like three, four, five things that we're going to be doing. And then that sparked also three, four, five things that we can do in content is profit, right? Now all of a sudden excitement is back. All of a sudden now we're sharing ideas, Fonsi and I. All of a sudden we're inviting these guests and we're telling, asking them good, you know, new questions and new things and they are excited as well. Uh, just recently, like, should we go back to doing it live? The answer is yes, heck yeah. We're going to start doing the show live again and uh, making that a priority because it got really exciting. So that's the passion project that we're starting and it just reactivated and kind of like re-shifted a bunch of stuff inside of us to elevate the show to a new level, right? So that's tip number one, start a a passion project. Now, number two, uh, start looking at... What are like what are some new formats that we can do, right? Like so in, in our case, specific case, we have conversations, right? And we do them because we love to connect with people. Our number one priority of the show is the relationships that we have with the person, you know. After that, it's like hopefully the content will help you because the content itself is helping us grow our business. And uh, what we hope to achieve is that people listening to the show also get that value and put some things into action, at least one thing that we share on the show. Now, the same format for 500 plus episodes might be, might get a little boring, might not be interested of, for so many people, right? We have people, we have clients that we work with that in episode 20, they're already thinking about changing things. And we say quality of the message over quality of the production. And like, you are the only person that listens to 100% of your message, right? So there might be people that are finding your show today after episode 200, after episode 100, that might not be familiar with that. So keep that in mind as you go on. But... It's okay to test new formats. So this person has been running his show for years with the same format. He's never considered trying something new. So what happens is that when we put the idea in his head, he's starting, oh, yes, I can do this and this, or I can remix this episode and put it on with a YouTube channel clip and uh, react to this comment here and this comment. And all these ideas started coming to mind and just making the shift and allowing yourself to think on how what new format can we do that and not thinking, hey, I need to stay in this box of an episode because we've always done it that way will allow you to create something new and something different, right? Uh, people, but Luis, hold on. What if, what if my audience gets confused? What if they don't like it? Well, let them know ahead of time. At the end of the day, it's your show, right? At the end of the day, it's your platform. At the end of the day, it's your content, And I think the first thing that we got to realize is like if we enjoy doing it, it's going to be a lot easier and the delivery is going to be a lot better over time. And then your audience is going to benefit, right? So don't be scared, right? Let them know. Be like, hey, guys, by the way, in the next three to five episodes, we're going to test something new. And uh, let's see what happens. I would love your feedback. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. So if you're listening to today's episode, let me know what you think, right? I would love to hear about it. So... Change the format. Try it out. Do two or three episodes like that, right? Maybe you call three to five people with like one question or you ask them three questions. So question one for five people is one episode. Question two for the five people is is the second episode. And question three for five is the, the third episode, right? 
separate calls. It's just like one question per episode. Maybe that's something in that, that you enjoy doing. You know, maybe you see a YouTube video of somebody that you admire giving advice. For example, Fla Frank Kern just reactivated his YouTube channel. He's a, he's a big marketer that we follow for a long time and we've learned a lot from him. I'm excited. He's just released two videos. We're going to be talking about it, about things that he says. So maybe can we react to something that another entrepreneur or another person that we admire or another guest says? Perfect. Let's do it, right? So I think number two is try new formats per episode. Let your audience know and have fun. You know, what's fun for you? I know with business content, it might be a little bit tricky, but what can be fun? What's exciting? What's new? What are new formats that other people are trying that you are dying to try, but because we think that we need to be in that episode that we can't change it, uh, we're not making any progress. So there to change it a little bit. And then the last tip is, um, is this one advice um, is really funny. We were in a conference and, and this person was speaking on stage and this person was well known for doing very different things than that his industry was doing, right? And he's like, one of my main sources of inspiration is other industry conferences. I will buy a ticket for, uh, you know, furniture conference and, you know, keep in mind we're in a business conference, right? Uh, or I will buy a ticket to go to an auto show and I just go, I just attend, I just listen to these people that are in a completely different industry than myself. I look at their setups, I look at the, what they're doing, what they're saying, how they're presenting and all this from other industries, right? Create this inspiration and then he creates something completely new. So on our case, I remember thinking about it. This is when we were starting the show and we had a little bit, you know, music in the background, um, kind of like this, right? Uh, I don't know if you remember, if you're an OG from Content is Profit, we had this little music background, then we had some noise, like kind of like this or this, as sometimes we do. I think we forgot a little bit about those. Um, but those are reference to a radio show that we used to listen about a couple comedians back in Venezuela that they had that style, right? And that allowed us to remove the friction and make it a lot better because we were enjoying doing it, right? But we were consuming content from other industries. We were consuming content from other people that are not business people, right? And then what are those elements that you can bring into it? So uh, that's my last piece of advice. Number three is consume content or consume from other industries apart from yours. So <clears throat> quick recap is the first one is start a passion project. Number two is try new formats for your episodes. And number three is consume content from other industries. I'm sure you're gonna get excited. There's gonna be a lot of ideas that you want to try and then put those ideas against your publishing pyramid, right? Your resources, your capacity. Can you execute it? Can your team execute it, right? Put them in your levers, right? How can I create this? How can I produce it? How can I distribute it, right? What do I say in these things? So if you have any, if you have no idea what I'm saying right now, just send me a DM and I'm happy to send you the six uh, levers training that we've done and the presentations that we've done uh, in, in the event and that will explain everything. But I just wanted to come in here and kind of debrief that conversation that we have with the HubSpot partners and, uh, and other creators because I feel like a lot of people might be in that spot where they might feel burnout at some point with creating content. We certainly have. And it does come across in your episodes. So... Um, I hope this reignites the fire, not just for me, but also for you as a creator. And, um, and I hope it helps. So if this was very useful and you like it, send me a message at Luis that creates or at Beast I'm happy to, to help you, uh, or happy to hear, you know, what you think. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, what are you doing in your content? And we would love to, to connect. With that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning to the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Biz Rose Go. Talk to you soon. Bye.